Hello and welcome to this review of my BTC 5339R0. It was made in 1992 in Taiwan and is part of the 53 series as BTC call it. Now this is one of BTC's older keyboards built using foam and foil technology before they moved on to using rubber domes. BTC was one of the most well-known foam and foil manufacturers together with Keytronic, of which I also have a foam and foil board. This one, which I'll be showing later in this review. The board itself is built much like other BTC boards, although it uses that older, rather large font, which actually looks fairly charming in my opinion, even though it's on cheap, partially decomposed pad printing. Later BTC boards, such as this rubber dome model, have a particularly tiny font instead, which is easily recognizable, and they usually come with all white caps. One way you can easily recognize most BTC boards is by the slightly larger than normal escape key. I've seen this happen on some other manufacturers' keyboards as well, but BTC are most well known for it. Being from 1992, of course it doesn't have Windows keys yet, but unlike the keyboards from other manufacturers where they have a little recess between the Control and Alt key, like on the Keytronic I showed earlier, they squash the two together instead, and that gives a particularly long space bar. Nine units, it's almost the entire length of the bottom row in fact. The keyboard has a metal backplate. It's not that tough, but it's not that badly built either. And there is a nice droplet effect on the paint on this back panel. Furthermore, here you can see the model sticker of the keyboard. It doesn't actually list the specific model number on it. You have to look at the FCC ID and BTC would keep using this black and white style of keyboard sticker for quite a while. Like I said, this keyboard uses foam and foil switches, which is a relatively cheap way of making a capacitive keyboard. It uses discs of foil over dual plates on the PCB to make up the capacitors. If you want to know how these capacitive keyboards work in detail, check out the link to my F122 video for a detailed explanation. Because any good keyboard will actuate before it bottoms out, you'll want to allow for over-travel, and that's what the foam is for. These foam and foil keyboards have several advantages, all of which are a direct consequence of it being capacitive in origin, and several disadvantages, all of which are a direct consequence of it using the foam. Advantages are a very robust and reliable sensing mechanism, inherent N-key rollover, and a potentially very clean key feel because the switch is extremely simple in construction with very few interacting parts. Disadvantages are that the foam can rot with age, even when it's not being used, and an inherent, literally spongy feel on bottoming out. Because the foam and foil mechanism takes up the entire inside of the switches, there is no room for a return spring inside, so instead they put it over the slider to create a linear switch like this one, or they used a buckling rubber sleeve to create a tactile switch. They even made an intriguing design with a click leaf in a notch to the side of the switch to create a unique clicky foam and foil switch, but it's very rare. These linear ones are pretty easy to accidentally activate when you're gaming, by the way, so I modded the arrow and WASD keys with buckling rubber sleeves taken from a Mitsumi board to prevent accidental key presses. Here you can see the insides of the keyboard showing all the foil discs under the keys. Nice and shiny. And here is one of the modules, if you can call it that. It's a simple sandwich of foil and foam with a plastic backing, and on top is that slider which holds it all together. The design of the slider is quite similar to that of BTC's later dome with slider keyboards. It has the same Cherry MX compatible top, but the bottom is a bit different. Now the usual problem with these foam and foil boards is that the foam in these modules rots over time, which gives rise to a very nasty key feel. But the foam pads in this keyboard appear to be relatively intact, it's still spongy, and it hasn't crumbled yet, so it looks like it's still in good condition. Even still, the key feel is weird, something I couldn't quite put my finger on, and it took me a long time to figure out what it was. It came to me when I tried it next to a Cherry MX Black keyboard. The key feel isn't actually linear, it's exponential. When I realized this, I figured out how this happens. Take a graph that plots force versus key travel. Now plot the linear force that arises from the coil spring in the switch, like so. 
Then, when you press it down enough, you engage the foam, which also has a linear force like so. Then, when you add up the two forces, you get something like this. And voila! What does that look like? An exponential curve, exactly. Now let's have a quick look at the Keytronic. It's a bit older, 1988, and I can't actually seem to get it to work. The num lock light comes on, but it doesn't register any key presses. It's pretty weird. Here is one of the Keytronic foam and foil units, and it's actually a whole discrete module rather than just a loose slider. Other than that, the construction is almost exactly the same as the BTC one, though. This one is a tactile foam and foil board, and it has these huge but quite thin rubber sleeves which don't feel very consistent or tactile. In fact, at first I thought this one was linear too. Actually, the key feel on this whole board is much rougher and scratchier than on the BTC. It's very unpleasant, and at first I thought maybe it was dirty inside, or it had seen lots of use, or that the foam on this one had decomposed. But you know what? The foam in these appears to be okay too, even though it's from 1988. And there's no dust in the mechanism whatsoever. And the keycaps are way too immaculate to have seen heavy use. The keycaps all look like this. They all have their profile. So what's happened here? Are they supposed to feel like this? But that would be insane. The key feels completely shit. No one would want this. What's happened here? Regardless, one thing has to be said for the Keytronic, and that is, look at this beautiful PCB that was inside it. It's almost a work of art. It's gorgeous. And the reverse side is pretty cool too. Look at that. Very nice. Overall, these foam and foil boards aren't what I'd recommend, to be honest. They're interesting as a curiosity, and the insides are nice and shiny, but even though the sensing mechanism is very reliable, and it has unlimited key rollover, the key feels just inconsistent and not very pleasant. They don't even make a very good noise. The Keytronic sounds very plasticky, and the BTC sounds a bit like my Amstrads, which is fairly horrendous. Anyway, that's it for this review. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. And here is a typing demonstration of me typing on the BTC.